And many of you are aware of the opportunity that Zero Knowledge presents for scaling blockchains. All the leading blockchains in the ecosystem are currently transitioning towards ZK scaling, starting with Ethereum with Starknet, followed by Solana with Light Protocol, and even Bitcoin with Alpin and potentially Starknet. You probably have no doubt about what the best scaling solution is. All the biggest names in the blockchain field have sufficiently explained to us that ZKPs are definitely the latest cryptographic revolution that is changing the game for blockchains. But don't be mistaken, this technology brings not only scalability, but also many other advantages to blockchains. Every technological breakthrough leads to new leaders, and the cards are reshuffled. Those who can adapt by integrating this new technology will win the game. With the disruption brought by ZKPs, make sure you have the right strategy. This requires having the right convictions. In the incredible game of blockchain, the rules are simple. You need good scalability, but that's not enough. You must leverage this technology to its full potential. ZKPs are not just a scaling solution, but primarily a privacy solution. They are also incredibly effective for decentralization, security, and interoperability. Ah, we go far beyond just a simple scaling solution. But which blockchains are truly leveraging ZKPs? How are ZKPs reshaping the current blockchain paradigm? Let's start by looking at where the leaders stand in adopting state-of-the-art blockchain technologies. Vitalik has established that ETH is sufficiently decentralized and secure, with the only remaining challenge being scaling, which absolutely no one disagrees with. This roll-up-centric roadmap has sparked significant interest in zero-knowledge research. Ethereum does not aim to question its decentralization due to a lack of competition and its focus on scaling. These same ZK technologies are revolutionary on more than one level. As with any technological breakthrough, foundational frameworks are upended. So while it's good to leverage the well-known scalability of ZK, prioritizing it over decentralization and security, which can still be significantly improved, is a mistake that a smaller and more agile project like Mina has avoided. It's not as easy as it looks, because it requires experts in mathematics and cryptography specific to zero knowledge. Even if their numbers have certainly doubled in recent years, that's still only perhaps 20 zero knowledge experts multiplied by two. While this doesn't seem to be Ethereum's apparent priority, you and I must not forget to explore everything that can be done with the technological revolution of ZK proofs. Their scaling properties aren't limited to the number of transactions, but also extend to scaling the number of validators by reducing block size with compressed proofs of block history. Although he remains discreet on this subject, Vitalik has a roadmap for Ethereum security and is not delegating the entire future evolution of blockchain solely to Layer 2, the question of the ideal Layer 1, which BTC and ETH have monopolized until now, is initially constrained by the blockchain trilemma. But we must not stop there, as disruptive technologies can evolve the definition of the ideal base Layer 1 blockchain. Let's first analyze what this blockchain trilemma is and see how it is evolving. Let's analyze this together. If we list everything that is important for a good Layer 1 blockchain, we find the importance of having a secure blockchain. This is where we talk about proof of stake, which determines how much capital is slashable in case of a fault. We also talk about decentralization, where the key factor is the number of validators in the blockchain network. Solana is often cited as an example of a blockchain that is not very decentralized because the requirements to become an operator are very demanding. This is one of the compromises that first-generation blockchains had to make in their search for scalability. Conversely, Bitcoin makes the opposite compromise to maximize decentralization by only requiring operators to have small machines. Bitcoin consciously chooses to limit block sizes. This even led to the block size war between the group that would eventually become Bitcoin Cash and the Bitcoin that Satoshi left us. This shows you how central decentralization is as a topic. People are fighting for it. The block size defines how easy it is for people to participate in the network, but a second important parameter comes into play, the consensus mechanism, which allows operators to communicate and agree on what is valid within a block. It's a coordination system between operators. Again, there are two opposing camps. On one side, the Tendermint consensus requires all operators to communicate with each other, which exponentially increases the number of communications with each additional operator. This rapidly limits the decentralization of the blockchain. On the other side, we have the Nakamoto consensus, which doesn't limit the number of operators at all. 
Here, not all operators are required to agree before moving on to the next blocks. What matters is the longest chain of blocks on which the majority of operators agree. The last important characteristic for a blockchain is scalability, the ability to process a maximum number of transactions per second at a low cost. We quickly understand why it's not possible to have good decentralization, good security, and good scalability all at the same time. You have to choose two, and you can't have the third. Ideally, we would be able to have both a large block size to maximize the number of transactions per block, and at the same time, small machines that are easy to decentralize, and a Nakamoto consensus to avoid limiting the number of validators. Before zero-knowledge proofs, it was not possible to be secure, decentralized, and efficient at the same time. This is the famous blockchain trilemma. The first generation of blockchains has its own trade-offs, and the market has rewarded decentralization. If we define a blockchain generation by the number of technological revolutions adopted, we can see that there is a first generation before the development of ZKPs, and one after. In the first generation, we find blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Blockchains adapt, more or less quickly, thanks to their forkability and social consensus. Thus, this first generation has the ability to evolve and transition to a second generation blockchain which shifts away from a paradigm where decentralization, security, and scalability are constrained by the trilemma. This will obviously give rise to a new trilemma of compromises that I have personally identified as sovereignty, security, and interoperability. It would be a much more desirable trilemma, resulting from the modularity and sharding of blockchains. We'll discuss these new compromises and personal conclusions later. Let's return to the main topic of this video. Understanding how MENA fits into this ideal next generation layer 1. To understand how MENA enables blockchains to be decentralized, secure and efficient all at once, we first need to grasp the following two key characteristics. MENA is a modular blockchain, meaning it focuses on a single layer of blockchain infrastructure and does it perfectly. The second characteristic is what makes MENA the ultimate settlement layer. MENA is the lightest blockchain in the world, with a block size of 22 kilobytes that remains fixed. In contrast, other chains can be around 300 gigabytes, so 14 million times larger, with sizes that increase block after block. MENA achieves this feat through zero-knowledge proofs, which are used to prove its own chain recursively. If I had to define MENA in one word, I would say proof. MENA is a proof of a proof, which itself is the proof of all the previous ones. The zero-knowledge proofs used by MENA produce snark proofs, which also allows MENA to be entirely private. The succinct nature of MENA facilitates participation in decentralization. This ensures robust security for all users with limited resources and allows for unparalleled decentralization. MENA is therefore extremely decentralizable, but as we have seen, the consensus mechanism can limit decentralization, and it's no surprise that MENA uses a consensus with properties similar to Bitcoin, which imposes no limits on its decentralization. Just like Bitcoin's Nakamoto consensus, which is designed to be highly decentralizable and resilient, MENA's consensus mechanism promotes robust decentralization by allowing each node to choose the block, thus forming a common chain. Even though MENA uses a proof-of-stake method rather than proof-of-work, this gives MENA's consensus similar properties of resistance and flexibility. Compared to Bitcoin's proof-of-work, MENA uses a proof-of-stake consensus to reach a canonical state in case of forks. MENA resists Sybil attacks with proof of stake, which allows everyone to both validate and stake their MENA to gain the voting power necessary for consensus. As a reward, stakers receive the network fees that users pay. So MENA would offer incredible decentralization and security. But what about scalability? Engineers have developed different frameworks enabling developers to take advantage of the best scaling technologies. O1.js allows building ZCAPs with roll-up technology directly in TypeScript, it's not the most scalable version, but it enables the construction of all types of general purpose applications that directly benefit from pre-built ZK circuits. The ZCAP is verified by MENA and runs on your browser, computer, or phone, all using a programming language that is extremely widely used in Web2. The second new solution built by MENA is Protokit. It is more efficient and more specialized. It allows for the creation of interoperable ZK app chains that preserve anonymity. This SDK enables MENA and O1.js developers to achieve greater performance and sovereignty with decentralizable and modular sequences. In conclusion, MENA's thesis from the very beginning, even before Celestia existed, was modularity. 
which we now know is clearly decisive for the second generation of blockchains. With its L1 separated from the DA layer and execution layer, Mina distinguishes itself by breaking the trilemma of the first blockchains. It even goes so far as to be among the best choices by leveraging ZK4 interoperability with ZK verification, which allows layer one and layer two to communicate by proving the validity of each exchange. Privacy, thanks to ZK SNARK cryptography. Decentralization with ZK recursion for a lightweight chain. Scaling, by verifying a very large number of transactions from a small proof. Mina is the ZK blockchain for a secure, private, composable, and verifiable internet. Mina is one of the projects to follow, and in upcoming videos, we will explore together the synergy between the two major players in modularity, Celestia and Mina. The goal is also to follow the recently published roadmap that promises an expansion of the ZK ecosystem at the application level. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe to keep up with all the developments in this ecosystem.